So, I'm looking around, I'm trying to figure out, could somebody please point me in the direction of the moon, because I expect it to be on the moon by now. I mean, today is uh, February 28th, there was a huge uh, cryptocurrency pump all throughout Christmas, uh, which culminated in Elon Musk uh, poking in uh, $1.5 billion and watching it disappear and evaporate. And um, I'm just looking around. I'm trying to figure out where's the moon. They told me we were going to the moon. They said we were going to Jupiter. Where's the moon? So anyway, uh, Bitcoin is right now at $44,700. It was a gigantic uh, uh, in Korea. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm looking at my... Uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh-oh. Oh, shit. This shit is dropping faster than I can fucking... Make my goddamn video. $44,308. Okay, so anyway, as I was saying, um, uh, yeah, Ethereum went all, what was it, the high, I think it was like close to 2000 and, and, and what happened there? Oh, 19997 so the high was 2036 All of a sudden, oh my goodness, my goodness. Well, the thing about it is, there's only so far it's going to fall because there is a bottom. And the reason why there's a bottom is because there's these institutions and people like Elon Musk who've thrown in so much money that uh, now they're watching their money get cashed out and they can't sell. That ultimately is the reason why this is a Ponzi scheme. Well, I, you know, I think when I use the word Ponzi scheme, I don't think a lot of people understand what that word means. Uh, so let's look it up. What is a Ponzi scheme? Well, a Ponzi scheme is a form of fraud that lures investors and pays profit to early investors with funds from more recent investors. I.e., when uh, Elon Musk puts $1.5 billion into it, uh, the people who got in really, really early, they're able to directly cash off the value and take his money, get out. But now the new people who are in it get stuck in it because they don't want to lose money. If they if they sell at a lower value than they bought in, they would lose money. So they want to stay in as long as they can in order to try to recoup what they put in, and then possibly get some profit. So yeah, if I put in $100, I'll try to wait until it turns into $200. Now here's the problem. To double my money on this shit, Bitcoin would have to go to $88,000. So if you put in $500, in order for you to double that $500 to $1,000, Bitcoin would have to go to $88,000, which is the reason why all of these uh, Bitcoin hypers keep on saying, oh, yeah, we're going to 100000 Back in 2018, they were saying Bitcoin was supposed to be a million dollars a coin by now. Now, did it go higher than it was in 2018? Oh, yeah, it did. Elon Musk put in $1.5 billion. A couple of investors uh, from these big institutions, they put in a couple of million dollars, and some of them might have even put in as much as a billion dollars. The thing about it is, here you are right now, you you, you saw a high that wasn't even 60,000 drop right back to 44,308. That's where you are. So let me uh, uh, let you know a couple of things that the news media like CNBC and NBC and those fake news medias are not going to tell you. MasterCoin, Master, I said MasterCoin, I shouldn't have said that, I should have said MasterCard. But anyway. MasterCard, just like PayPal and just like a couple of other services, they were talking about uh, allowing Bitcoin into their network. Sure enough, MasterCard turned around and they were like, no, Bitcoin is too volatile to be a part of our network. So MasterCard is basically saying, after after we watched $58,000 turn into 40, wait, what's that number? Hold on, hold on. What's that number? After we watched... 58,000 turn into 44,308. MasterCard is pulling back. MasterCard saying, nah, 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 I don't think we want to do that. Because the last thing MasterCard needs is a bunch of old people calling up MasterCard and saying, excuse me, where's my money? They don't need that shit. 
So uh, basically, this is where you are right now. Oh, and by the way, let me just, I don't want to forget, let me point out. So I got somebody here named uh, Lorand uh, Bean. This is the name, and they got a little cute anime character, which means that this person is probably mentally incompetent. And his uh, one uh, couple of videos here is something about War Thunder, where he got 82 views, 368 subscribers with his little anime girl. Uh, yeah. Um, so this person tells me, man, you starting to be annoying. Can't you keep your content at least close to what your channel should be about and was about? Putting personal life and things you are doing up is fine. But when you pretty much spam the same stuff every day, it gets annoying. So to Lauren Bean, as you can see, I, I replied right here. And uh, as you read my reply, it says, well, thank you very much, Lauren Bean, for your concern. But I believe that what I should be doing is showing my followers and my subscribers better and proper ways to invest their money towards the long term. So when they invest their money properly for the long term, they will most likely be able to reap benefits such as dividends and they'll be able to increase their money because I'm, I'm reading between the lines here. They'll be able to increase their money by reaping dividends and they'll be able to probably double and triple and quadruple their money just like I did for them with oil stocks such as CPE, just like with pharma such as CTIC, which I told everybody to buy into when it was 80 cents and now it's $3 and 20 something cents. Just like TTI oil stock, just like AMD and Logitech, I was sounding the bell telling everybody to do that. If they had put their money in, they would have either doubled or they would have tripled their money from the time I told them. So thank you, Lauren Bean, for your, uh, your um, thank you for your uh, concern. But what I plan on doing here is instead of being like some YouTubers and just taking money and spending it and flashing it on the newest and best stuff that I can buy, putting myself deeper in debt, what I've decided to do recently was to use my money in order to teach people in order to make more money off of their money. So as you can see, that's what I typed to this person right here. That's what I typed to him, as you can see. So um, that's where you are right now with that. Now, as far as, uh, let's see. Right now, you may or may not have heard of it, but uh, Virginia, Virginia is uh, focused on, uh, right now, they try to legalize marijuana. So as you know, New Jersey is trying to uh, push forward legalized marijuana, both recreational and medicinal. New York is trying to push forward on uh, legalizing marijuana, both recreational and medicinal. And now you got Virginia. Because if you think about it, it's impossible for one of these states that's surrounded by other states to, to legalize something like marijuana that people actually want to use. It's a commodity. This is a commodity. Unlike Bitcoin and Ethereum and all these other cryptocurrencies like Dogecoin, which said that I was supposed to be on Mars by now, unlike those things, investing in marijuana means that you're investing in a real, tangible commodity. And as I've already proved with my own marijuana profile, investing in marijuana penny stocks has made me a far fuckload more money than investing in goddamn Dogecoin. And I'll just say it just like that. So, um, as far as you probably want to say, excuse me, well, what marijuana stock should I be looking at? Well, um, I went through uh, the uh, I went through the labors of making you a nice list of the ones that I bought. I basically bought into these things with ten thousand dollars. I'm sorry, ten thousand dollars. I, I used I split up my money, but I bought ten thousand shares of some of them, and the ones that were more expensive, I bought less, but the ones that were least expensive, I bought more, like in some cases, I bought 50,000, 100,000, whatever, so you, you get the point, but um, the, the mere fact that I spent on MJNA, the mere fact that when I bought into MJNA, I bought this for less than a penny, and I bought 10,000 shares of it, and it went up to 0 0.07, which as you remember from my videos, had made me over $2,000 before I sold it. 
and I used that money in order to buy, um, I think it was Apple at the time, because I wanted to put the money someplace safe that paid a dividend. The mere fact that at any given time, my, what, what 10,000 shares worth of this right here is like $10 or something. The mere fact that I could take 10,000 shares and turn it into that much more money by buying a penny stock like this. This is very similar. When you look at these numbers, it's very similar to looking at some of these cryptocurrencies. The thing that you got to remember is the cryptocurrencies have nothing behind them. These are real companies. Marijuana Company America, Green Grow. I, I've had people tell me, oh man, I made so much money off of Green Grow. There was at least four people who told me that because they bought in when I first told them about it. Green Grow used to be a lot less. All of these used to be a lot less. But because of the election of President Kamala Harris getting that moron Donald Trump out of office, all of a sudden, marijuana stocks started growing because people realized, wait a minute, these Democrats are going to make this shit legal. Unlike these goddamn Republican stupid bastards. So they say, you know what? We're going to buy marijuana and we're going to buy the stock because now we're legalizing it. It may take one year. It may take two years, but this is the ground floor. So I, I'm gonna, I'm not even gonna talk that long because I already talked for ten minutes. If you wanna take all your money and you wanna put it on Dogecoin, or you wanna take your money and you wanna give it to these people in Bitcoin who are waiting to cash out, or if you wanna take your money and put it into Ethereum because oh yes, Ethereum's the engine of all cryptocurrency and blah blah blah. Well. You go right on ahead and do that. That's your choice. Everybody can invest their way. I can't tell you how to invest. I can't force your hand. That's fine. But meanwhile, I'm over here buying dividend-paying stocks. And marijuana, marijuana is my penny stocks. Those are all my penny stocks. Everything you see in here, these are my penny stocks. Pennies turn into dollars. But I'm over here mostly focused on the dividend payers. And the reason why, again, is because when you buy dividend payers and your money is sitting there, these are real big companies. AT&T, Exxon, Chevron, BP, Gilead, ISBC. These are real companies where these are not fly-by-night operations. I could drive right down my block and there's a Wells Fargo. I can turn on my radio and there's a Sirius XM. I can... Go down the block, there's a Royal Dutch Shell. There's a Shell station. I can go down the other block, there's a Citibank. There's a Capital One. These are real companies. This is not douche coin with some moron put pictures of a dog on the moon. This is not that. So guess what, guys? If you want to risk your money getting rich in a Ponzi scheme, you go right on ahead. Um, and I know there's always somebody who's quick to say, ah, hey, yeah, well, the U.S. dollar is a Ponzi scheme. Well, guess what? Guess what? You know why the U.S. dollar is not a Ponzi scheme? Let me show you right now uh, why the uh, U.S. dollar is not a Ponzi scheme. Um, the reason why the U.S. dollar is not a Ponzi scheme is simply because of this right here. It's called the military-industrial complex. The mere fact... That if anybody says anything about America or does anything to America, the mere fact that right now I could get in one of these and I could take off and I could drop a nuclear bomb on you tells me that the U.S. dollar ain't no goddamn Ponzi scheme. So you can believe what you want. The mere fact that I got a freaking jet where I can fly intercontinentally and drop bombs on you tells me that the U.S. dollar is not a Ponzi scheme. Oh, you know what else we got? What else we got? We got, oh, okay. Um, uh, yeah, you want to see why the U.S. dollar is not a Ponzi scheme? You, this is, this right here, this right here is the re this, this right here is the reason why the U.S. dollar is not a Ponzi scheme. Now, I want you to do me a favor, and I want you to show me what uh, Bitcoin and what Dogecoin has back in it. Because the mere fact that I could get into this right here and make entire countries disappear tells me that the U.S. dollar is not a Ponzi scheme.